G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at antennas. We might also take a look at some laser antennas and some beacons. Back when I started playing Space Engineers we didn't have GPS markers, so I used to put a beacon down on every single one of my base bases. Now though, with GPS I don't need that for my bases, but for my large ships if I need to find my way back, or my small ships if I'm expecting them to go a fair way away, beacons can actually be a pretty cheap way to be able to find them if they're still mo moving. Beacons don't cost much power and even the small ship one goes all the way out to 50 kilometers and only costing 10 kilowatts to do so. The large ship costs the large ship beacon costs exactly the same and goes to exactly the same distance. So they can be quite useful for finding your way home. Antennas have a much smaller range, particularly when we're talking about the small ship. By default, they're 500 meters, and this is important to remember as it's rare that you'll only want it to be 500 meters if you're trying to use this antenna to not lose your ship. So when you place it, remember to whack that all the way up to 500 meters, five kilometers I should say, so that you can still find your ship from a reasonable way out and you can see this is costing twice as much to produce a tenth of the distance. Large ship antennas, these go out a considerable amount further, but to do so they cost a considerable amount more. These start off with a reasonable default broadcast radius of 10 kilometers, and they go up to the same as the beacons, but costing 200 times as much to do so. Sorry, not 200, bleh, 20 times as much to do so. Then you've got laser antennas. These will allow you to connect between two ships or two grids but without being able to be visible to any other grids. And the small ship laser antenna, it has a range of 20 kilometers, so that'll give you a boost of range for antenna communication using small ships compared to using the standard antenna. And for the large ship laser antenna, it's actually shorter than the standard antenna. It only goes out to about 40 kilometers. If we have a closer look at what functions we can use an antenna for, when we hop in here, you can see that it can be switched off so that it doesn't broadcast. And if we do that, we no longer see an antenna icon on our HUD. Probably help if I had my HUD on to demonstrate that. You can see antenna, a whole bunch of other antennas, but this one is off. And if we have that off, it also won't be able to be used to connect remotely to other ships. You can also have it show the ship name, and in this case, it's going to show grid something or other. Small grid 5017 antenna. If you just want it to show your ship's name, you can simply delete the whole name here, and then it just shows the name of the ship with a space dash space at the end. Or, of course, you can just name the antenna the name of your ship. Turn off small ship name, show ship name, and then it'll just show that. Which is probably the neater way of doing it. Our player's suit has its own antenna built in. It has a range of 200 meters, and we can confirm that by going out to just beyond 200 meters, where we will still see the radio signals from the other antennas. But if we go to Shift K, which is our remote control terminal, you'll see that all of these are grayed out. They're all unavailable to me. You can see that most of them have remote controls, but we can't actually get access to any of these ships. If I move just within 200 meters of one of these antennae, and you can see that I'm now 194 from one, 198 from another, and then all the others are more than 200 meters, you'll see that I can actually gain access to every single one of them, even these ones that are beyond that range. The reason for that is, these two are acting as relays, and any active antenna that creates two-way communication between one grid and another can act as a relay. For this demonstration of how the antenna relays work, what we have is a bunch of antennas set up back here, another antenna that is within range, 
at 500 meters that has its range expanded out quite considerably to about 2,700 meters. Yeah, 2,700 meters. Then, way off in the distance somewhere here, hopefully I won't fly past it. Aha, here we go. Is another little ship with its antenna set to just 500 meters. Let's have a look at what we can see and what we can access from each point. We'll start with this one. From this point, I can actually see all of the other ships. I can see their antenna readings and if I turn my character this way, we can get a bit of a better idea. We can see the pink, the cyan, the purple. We can see all of them. What's happening is that the distant antenna signals, the 500 meter ranged ones, are being relayed by the ship that has a 2,700 meter antenna radius. However, because we've only got one way communication in that direction, as in the long range antenna reaches this ship, but this ship's and my personal antennas don't reach back, and we can prove that if I jump in the ship, still can't control anything. Because we've only got that one way communication, we can see where things are, but we can't control them. On the other hand, if we go to the center ship, you would have noticed that we couldn't see this distant ship. And that's because its antenna range is only 500 meters, so we can't visualize it. And then from back here, we see the same thing as we can see from the middle which is we can only see these ships and the one with the extended range. If we wanted to have the ability to control these ships from the distant one, we would need to increase the distant ship's range in order to cover the purple ship's antenna. So that there's two-way communication between the purple ship and the red ship. So what sort of distance will that be? I think we need about one point, what's it going to say? Let's get to the red ship and see if we can make out the purple one from the HUD. 1.48 kilometers, all right. We know we went beyond 1.6 kilometers to get out here. Let's do this manually and drop this to 1550. That should cover the purple one. Now, if I press Shift K, I can actually take control of any of these ships. And you'll notice the purple ship is only 1487 meters away, yet my antenna is set to 1550 and I can actually take control of one of these other ships. If we have a look, I'll get my camera, unlock the landing gear, and you'll see that I am currently I think I accidentally just piloted my own ship. <sighs> what have I done? That was ridiculous. Let's try that again. Let's grab the Lime ship. Take control. Aha! There we go. And you can see, we're actually back at base. We can see the beacons. We can see the other ships that were here with us. And we can control this ship all the way out to when it's 500 meters away from the purple ship. Because our antenna on this ship is set to 500 meters. If I move this out beyond 500, I'm going to lose control. And right now these closer ones are acting as a relay, so I'm going to have to move out 500 meters beyond them as well. So you can have multi-stage relays. You can set up a relay network so that you could theoretically control a ship on the other side of a planet. I don't know how well that would work performance wise. So here we go, we're almost out, and then lost connection. If we fly back over to the base, that ship's going to be hovering up over the mountains, over the hillsides, off on the side of the lake. And we can see. And our Lime ship is still hovering here where we left it because it lost connection to its antenna relays. If 
I move within range, I should even be able to control our red ship. Which is 2,396 meters away. Grab the camera and I can fly it all the way back home using remote control. The next thing we're going to look at is laser antennas. We've got two ships set up here, blue ship and pink ship. Laser antennas connect from one ship directly to another. If we go to our laser antenna menu, well, one grid directly to another, to be more technically correct, we can have a look at these settings they've got down the bottom. We can copy our coordinates into our clipboard. We can paste coordinates we already have in our clipboard in, and then we can connect to them. So if we're going to use that system, we can copy our coordinates, hop out, hop in the blue ship, and you can see the antennas are both facing forwards. Then if we jump to our laser antenna, paste our coordinates, and then select connect to coordinates, you'll see that the antennas now facing the other one and both are facing each other. We now have a connection between these two antennas. We can set this up as a permanent connection so that they don't lose each other. And that way, anytime it comes back in range, it should try and re-establish that connection. We can also, with the laser antenna, connect to other, other coordinates through another way. If you've already got a connection established, you can click idle to clear that. We can then select other known receivers and, cl and click connect to receiver. Then if we check up above, the two are facing one another. I was interested to find out whether ownership would have an impact on laser antenna function. So with this laser antenna, I've set it to be owned by nobody. And if I copy its coordinates, I might be able to connect it, but I'm not going to be able to use the known receivers. It will not find the other one. And even if I change the blue antenna to be owned by nobody, and we'll have a look, it still has no known receivers. We set it to be owned by nobody, it still won't find them. It's only if they're both owned by me will it find them. But if I paste the coordinates in, if I head back over here and copy it, because I don't think it copied, we'll try and do the copy paste and see if it'll work. I suspect it still won't. I think ownership has to match up for laser antennas to function. Yep, I can't. It's searching and it can't find it. Because the laser antenna is not owned by me, it won't find it. I wonder if it'll correct that as I transfer ownership back to me. Ah, excellent. So if you have it set up to try and find that other one that's changed ownership, if you change it back, it will all work. So let's have a closer look at these antennae. What we've got is an antenna system and you can see that it's rotating as I move in order to follow that other antenna's location. The way this is supposed to work, I'm pretty sure, is that if anything gets in the way of the antenna link, so if there's no direct line of sight, this should stop working. Right now we have direct line of sight so if we press Shift-K and bring up our remote access terminal, you can see that I can actually control everything. And that's because this laser antenna is relaying to the other ships from the local antenna of the, sh of the blue ship. The local antenna of the blue ship, if we jump into its terminal, is set to 500 meters. So that's how we're accessing control of the other ships. And our laser antenna its range is 20 kilometers, so we have to move a long way away before this connection will be lost. But what about getting something physically in the way? Well, right now, my ship is in the way. And we can see we're no longer able to take control of things. And if I press K, we look in our laser antenna and we see that it says target outside movement range because it can't pitch down that low in order to establish a connection. If we pitch forward, it says it's connected again. 
Well, what about voxels? I've had mixed experience with voxels blocking the laser antenna's function. It seems like it's meant to block it, but half the time when it does, I'm still able to make remote connections via the laser antenna connection. So if we drop down below this ridge line and block off those other signals, in theory we should lose our connection entirely. We can still see the signals, which means they're still being transmitted by this laser antenna connection. That is not there. But if we go to remote access, we can still take control of everything. If we grab this one, look at its camera view. Oh. Oh. Hang on. Let's grab... Cyan, take control. There we go. That's better. You can see that I'm actually in control of the Cyan camera and ship, even though our laser antenna is below the ridgeline and should not be able to see. It seems like blocks are effectively breaking the connection, but right now voxels aren't. I suspect that will be patched in the future. So I wouldn't expect that functionality to remain because it seems to be counter to what Keen have talked about when they first introduced these blocks. And I do like the way that it spins around. It's kind of a cool little block. Earlier when I was testing the laser antennas, we saw that it, they were able to function through the voxels of a planet. They aren't intended to work that way as far as I can tell. From everything I've seen about laser antennas, they're supposed to work by line of sight. You can see that these two ships can see one another and that they're currently connected. I wanted to find out whether it was something to do with planets that was stopping them from working as intended, so I thought we should try with an asteroid between them. As you can see, I've got my antenna off, so any connection I'm going to have is through the laser antenna. And if I press Shift K, you can see that I can see the pink ship I can take control of the pink ship and I can fly the pink ship. Even though our laser antenna says it's trying to establish a connection and does not have one. It's unfortunate, but I suspect this will get patched in the future. So try not to make any plans around using these to pass through solid matter. So that's a little bit about antennas, how they function. And we're going to take advantage of these in a future tutorial, not saying when that's going to be, but it will be soonish, on how to use autopilot. That and plenty more is to come, so I'll see you then.